I now recognize the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Price, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thanks to all of our witnesses. Uh, particularly happy to welcome back our former colleague, Mr. Mulvaney, and um, who for years shared the representation with me and our delegation of the, of the Carolinas. Uh, Mr. Mulvaney's offered a kind of revisionist history here this morning, and I, I want to maybe set up a chance for our other panelists, perhaps starting with Dr. Blessing, our, uh, our economic historian, but others welcome to chime in. Want to set, want to set up a, a, a dialogue regarding some of the directly relevant, I think, to assessing how the, how the debt limit works in, in practice. Um, the um, Budget Control Act uh, of uh, 2011 was the direct result of the, uh, of the, of the debt ceiling debate of that year. It, um, uh, I, I, I would agree it was a gift that kept on giving. I, I don't share the positive assessment of the way it worked in practice. But, but first of all, Dr. Blessing, this, uh, this notion that the S&P downgrade that came after that protracted debate, that it really had very little to do with the debt ceiling, that the, the, the S&P downgrade was about, uh, would, would might have, I, I guess Mr. Olvani is saying it, it probably would have been imposed even without the debt ceiling debate because it really had to do with our levels of, uh, of indebtedness. So it, would, would that be your understanding of, of that downgrade and what precipitated it? Sure, the credit agencies were, were threatening downgrade from earlier in the year. They had also threatened downgrade in previous episodes of debt ceiling brinksmanship, including 1999, uh, 1995 to 96. Uh, so this is uh, something that they've uh, threatened in connection specifically with debt ceiling uh, problems in the past. It was directly relinked to the debt ceiling prospect that the prospect that was posed of default. Yes. All right. Now, the gift the gift on giving, the Budget Control Act. Um, we, uh, the Budget Control Act was a, was a symbolic gesture. It, it put forward, put forth uh, for 10 years, budget ceilings that were, were kind of talking points. They, they were totally unrelated to uh, budget reality, appropriations reality, but they did have an effect. They did have an effect because for 10 long years, we had drama every other year. We, we re required uh, four two-year budget agreements, but it didn't come uh, easily. It came at the end of the budget cycle, a lot of drama, a lot of threat and shutdowns. And then finally, an adjustment to uh, to more realistic uh, budget numbers. Would, would you regard that as a as a positive history? I mean, there there is a case to be made, of course, for budget parameters that uh, that last for uh, two years, maybe even five years. But do you require a um, a budget ceiling uh, showdown to uh, to get that result or to adopt those kinds of parameters? The general understanding of sequestration is that it's really troubled and already troubled appropriations process, particularly over the past decade. It's also been difficult for the same, same exact same reasons the first time we tried it. Uh, it's both uh, difficult for appropriators as well as uh, doesn't substantially uh, lend itself to, um, you know, controlling the debt. Right. So the Budget Control Act, uh, it, in a sense, disrupted that process rather than facilitated. Uh, a kind of orderly budget uh, process. Uh, well, then let's let's think about the uh, Trump tax cuts, the um, the, uh, the kind of adjustments that were required in the debt ceiling uh, in the last decade. Is it true that the Trump tax cuts required uh, major adjustments in the debt ceiling? And is it uh, not true that uh, going back here to what Mr. Hoyer said, is is it not true that the Democrats tried to break the fever on this? Tried to say we shouldn't be uh, making this kind of a showdown, purely political showdown, every time we need to raise the debt ceiling. Raised it, in fact, three times, cooperated in that. And so it was an unpleasant surprise um, in the current administration when Republicans reverted to that kind of um, uh, adamant uh, refusal. What would you say about that? Vis-a-vis uh, -vis your first question, um, the uh, when Congress voted on the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, the estimated cost was $1.5 trillion over 10 years. It was uh, rescored to be more than that. I believe CBO rescored it to be about uh, $2 trillion over 10. So uh, that, in addition to all other spending, both 
uh, tax expenditures as well as appropriations is going to add to uh, the debt ceiling. Um, Vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, partisan partisanship um, and uh, difficulties raising the debt ceiling, uh, both parties over a very large historical span of time have both played political hardball with it. Um, we're in the most dangerous period right now from 2011 uh, to the present uh, time, um, which uh, has been particularly exaggerated because default is act actually at risk. And I think we've all seen what happened um, this past December with that. Well, just to re revisit my question, did Democrats uh, cooperate in raising the debt ceiling three times over the past decade? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chairman.